Chapter 14. Mind over Matter He could drive well, when he kept the speed reasonable. I had to admit, like so many things, it seemed to be effortless to him. He barely looked at the road, yet the tires never deviated so much as a centimeter from the center of the lane. He drove one-handed, holding my hand on the seat. Sometimes he gazed into the setting sun. Sometimes he glanced at me, my face, my hair blowing out the open window, our hands twined together. He had turned the radio to an oldies station, and he sang along with a song I'd never heard. He knew every line. You like fifties music? I asked. Mm, music in the fifties was good. Much better than the sixties or seventies. Ugh, he shuddered. The eighties were bearable. Are you ever going to tell me how old you are? I asked, tentative, not wanting to upset his buoyant humor. Hmm, does it matter much? His smile, to my relief, remained unclouded. No, but I still wonder, I grimaced. There's nothing like an unsolved mystery to keep you up at night. I wonder if it will upset you, he reflected to himself. He gazed into the sun, the minutes passed. Try me, I finally said. He sighed and then looked into my eyes, seeming to forget the road completely for a time. Whatever he saw there must have encouraged him. He looked into the sun, the light of the setting orb glittering off his skin in ruby-tinged sparkles, and spoke. Hmm, I was born in Chicago in 1901, he paused and glanced at me from the corner of his eyes. My face was carefully unsurprised, patient for the rest. He smiled a tiny smile and continued, mm, Carlyle found me in a hospital in the summer of 1918. I was 17 and dying of the Spanish influenza. He heard my intake of breath, though it was barely audible to my own ears. He looked down into my eyes again. I don't remember it well. It was a very long time ago, and human memories fade. He was lost in thoughts for a short time before he went on. I do remember how it felt when Carlyle saved me. It's not an easy thing, not something you could forget. Your parents? They had already died from the disease. I was alone. That was...